Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Multimedia, and this is now my fourth time recording this. I have had audio issues and I have been away and I am tired. But let's hop into it. Uh, this is This Week in EDM, uh, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. Uh, we're starting off in the bad category. Just remember, these are my opinions. Don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, we've got Galantis with Eight Days. Uh, the vocals feel, feel really weak. It's almost like someone, um, whoever they got for the vocals here, doesn't really have the vocal strength to be on a big track like this. But otherwise, it's kind of a generic commercial deep house cut. Speaking of commercial generic Jeep House cuts, uh, we've got Hayden James featuring Izzy Bizu with Medicine from the new We Could Be Love LP by Hayden James. A uh, pretty boring track with a vocal delivery from Izzy that just doesn't match the tone of the track. I feel like that's um, a big thing this week that you'll hear me say a lot is that the vocals are really the deciding factor of whether or not I really like to tune this week or not. So uh, yeah, otherwise this is another kind of generic commercial Deep House cut that I didn't really vibe with. Then we got Sabai featuring Linny with Are You Happy Now. Other than this being like another generic melodic dubstep track, uh, the lead screechy synth is maybe Sabai's least engaging melody yet. Um, and yes, the lyrics are still generic as generic can be with melodic dubstep. And speaking of melodic stuff, we've got Elefante and Yatep in the meh category. Uh, we've got Elefante and Yatep featuring Day with All We Get, a uh, very whatever generic melodic bass tune that just is. I have heard the sound a million times, and I'm getting bored of it. Speaking of getting bored of it, we've got Haleen and Nurko with Take Your Light. I do enjoy the more vocal focus mellow dub here, but yet again, the style and genre is the same old, same old with the slightest changes in the drops. And I am very much running out of things to say about melodic dubstep at this point. So, And then, then we got Bishu with Lonely. Uh, Bishu's vocal style is one that doesn't really hit for me in particular, and I feel like even more so on this track in particular. Uh, maybe because I feel like I don't really like the swearing. I think it's a bit unnecessary, but that's just me as... All these are just my opinions, but uh, otherwise it's a simple D and B beat, I would say. So then we got Excision with Together as One. I know it's a Transformers movie, but the Transformers specific language just sounds silly behind Excision's like metallic dubstep sound design. It's almost like it's a parody of itself. Um, not really my thing, but definitely not a bad song and definitely a flat mix on this track for sure. Then we got Fairlane, No Etiquette, and Timidy with Raka. Didn't love the vocals and found them to not match the tone of the rest of the track, as you've heard me say a couple times now. Um, yeah, production-wise, I think it's fine DMB. I just personally don't feel Fairlane's kind of rock fusion sound as of late. Just a style that is not hitting with me in particular. Then we got Murata with Old Guard from the title or from the EP of the same name, the Old Guard EP. Uh, the first half of this track in particular is some of Murata's best production this year, uh, but then lean back into some old habits with the back half. Um, holistically, I think this is a good look for Murata moving forward, and I'm intrigued to hear what the rest of this EP sounds like. But uh, yeah, not too bad. Then we've got Seven Lions and Elenium with Not Even Love, the Muzz remix. I uh, wasn't loving the first two drops as they kind of fell into some more generic D&B tropes uh, and were practically copy-paste drops, but um, that last drop was a little bit more um, on the unique side with the jittery synth and a hard style beat that uh, gave it a little bit more life, um, even if the first two drops uh, were a little bit safe. Then we've got Cheat Codes and Julia Church with Modern Tragedy, another fairly generic deep house tune, but one that Julia Church brings a lot to, I will say. Um, she kind of brings a little bit more of a melodic tinge to the whole thing, and I think um, she makes the track uh, a pretty good track by herself. So uh, way to go, Julia Church, I think really enhanced the production on this one. I uh, don't know how much he added, but yeah. Then we've got Skybreak and Space Yeti with Terminal. Uh, I cannot be biased on this channel. I was just down in Seattle this weekend, seeing Skybreak, Last Heroes, AU5, and Flux Pavilion. But um, yeah, I, I can't be biased or else this channel shouldn't exist. Uh, is, I, yeah, this is just one of my least favorite, I think, Skybreak tunes um, as of late, especially this year. I didn't gel with the melody as I found it to be a touch too linear. And for a color-based style track, I think it's a touch generic. So um, love Skybreak break and uh i think he's a super cool dude and it's a shame that this uh weekend was the weekend i went and saw him the one that i thought was his uh yeah his, his weakest tune but hey gotta be honest and then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty good. We've got Ovi Sky with Take It Slow, a nice bouncy house tune with a future-based tone to it. It's simple and gets the job done and has a very nice atmosphere to it.
Then we've got Morton and Artbat with, uh, or featuring Bon with Hollow. Um, I've been very critical of Morton lately, but I think uh, this one actually is a hit. Uh, it's got a big Future Rave sound, and the vocals from Bon really do match the tone of the production and are a great addition to this track. My only gripe is that it just ends super abruptly, and I think it needed um, a real like fade out in some capacity. Then we got Medusa and Halo with Another World. Uh, Halo just has this presence to her that turns any kind of average track into a great one, and she did it here again. Um, I don't know what voodoo magic she does to each of these tracks, but um, this is one of Medusa's best tracks in a while, and I think that is mainly in part to whatever Halo did to it, and I am a fan. Then we got Mr. Fiji Ouija with You and I. I really do love Fiji's, like, unique unique take on Garage with his current kind of soundscape. Um, I do think it's getting a little stale, and I'd love to see him tackle some more vocal-driven and atmospheric tracks again, though, uh, that being said. So I still like it, but um, I'm looking for maybe a change-up again for Fiji. Then we got Just a Gent and Odd Kids out with Changes, a really unique trap cut with like a wonky synth lead and repetitive vocal sample. Really fun blending of sounds from these two producers into a really fresh new track. And so this is one that you need to go listen to because uh, my description does not do it justice, I'll say. Then we got Direct with Finally Free, a quick hit of Garage with this kind of twisty and winding synth run that really sounds fantastic. It's a more laid-back tune and one that is really quite creative from Direct. I think oftentimes he's a little bit more streamlined in his production, but this one feels a little bit more free-flowing, and I uh, really enjoy it. Then we got Tokyo Machine with Crank, uh, a really short release at under two minutes, but uh, hey, this is some of Tokyo's most like crushing, intense production yet, despite the mix feeling fairly flat and gated, I will say. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like the sounds that Tokyo was going for here, but the mixing just was a little odd choice-wise for me, so... And then we got Rufus the Soul with Break My Love, a brighter production by Rufus the Soul Standards. I really love the direction they took with this one. It's a more kind of straightforward, progressive, and melodic house tune, um, yet one that st stays very true to their core sound of who they are with Rufus the Soul. Then we got Kalina Zanders and Chami with Daddy Keeps Calling, uh, Tech House with some gospel and disco sound design. Uh, the song has a lot of life and energy to it that often isn't as prevalent in Tech House tracks nowadays, and uh, this is a pretty sick one, I must say, so I enjoy this one quite a bit. Then we got Thirst and Nefori with Underground, absolutely grooving Speedhouse track with hits of more disco on this one here all throughout. Um, a stylistic detour for both Thirst and Nefori, but uh, for sure I think it worked out magically. Um, yeah, it's another short one, but feels like a kind of 90s style short, like a 1990s song that were short, like kind of like an Earth, Wind, and Fire track that, um, yeah, it feels, feels more like that than a modern short song. I don't know how that makes sense, but it does in my head. Then we've got Fortet and Ellie Golding with In My Dreams, an odd collaboration that actually sounds great. Um, Ellie Golding's vocals are heavily processed, but are still very distinctly hers, and Fortet's kind of got this bright, light, and colorful production that is very much on full display on this track. Then we've got Heritage with Boss from the new Negatives album out now by Heritage. Uh, this track in particular has massively dense dubstep drops, but with a kind of backing trap production to it, it's a bit of a hybrid of a dubstep and trap song. Um, it absolutely slaps, it smacks, and it's probably one of my favorite Heritage tracks yet, I must say. Then we've got Charlie XCX and Troy Savon with Talk Talk. Ironically, I think this is a downgrade from the original, which was my favorite from the album. Uh, the remix changes up a lot more than just adding a Troy Savon feature, which was kind of a formula that Charlie XCX did with a lot of these um, remix style tracks. But I do think it's a bop. Uh, I just think the energy is a little bit more muted now than it was on the original. I actually really like Troy Savon's vocals a lot in his verse, but um, just less so on the production side of things and where it went um, structurally. So not bad. They got Hello World with Casualty, some more 8-bit kind of electronic sounding liquid drum and bass with smooth vocals and a nice hook. Um, this new Hello World era is a lot stylistically cleaner. I think it's really working for him. Um, cleaner in the sense that his old stuff was a little bit more rigid and stylistically a little like crackly and this one feels more streamlined and uh, well packaged. And then we got Rez and Virtual Riot featuring One True God with Give Into You. This is probably my favorite Rez track maybe ever, as I think the mid-tempo production is really honed in and the mixing is the best it's ever been, which I can really only credit to Virtual Riot, I'm assuming here. Um, all that being said, I do hear the more like, I, or I don't hear as many of the Virtual Riot elements all throughout. I hear the, like the little bits and pieces of it here and there, but um, it's very, very much a, a Rez style track, which will be interesting because um, I think hypothetically this is going to be on a, a bigger Virtual Riot album album, right? Like, that's what we're assuming at this point. So, um, yeah. Otherwise, I think it's another kind of well-packaged mid-tempo tune. 
Then we've got Saint Punk and City Wolf with Fracture Station 2. Uh, really great track from these two with big bassy drops and pop punk vocals. Uh, this trap absolutely this track absolutely slaps hard with a tone that is part electronic, part punk, which is very perfect for a Saint Punk track. So uh, go listen to that one for sure. This one surprised me a ton. Uh, then we're moving into the standout category. Three songs in standout that I think are a true cut above the rest this week. And we're starting with Oliver's How Will I Know from the Sable Valley Summer Volume 5. Uh, Oliver's tacking, uh, tackling an iso knock trap sound, and I think he did it masterfully. It doesn't sound like a ripoff, and really I think it sounds more like a homage with Oliver's adding in a lot more of this kind of dub and DNB elements that Oliver's is known for. Um, I think this is the best non iso knock isonoc like track yet. I think we've heard a lot of sort of ripoffs and homages to that sound as of late, but I think this is the best um, non isonoc artist to really do that sound. So then we've got Glacier with Pining. Uh, yeah, Glacier's absolutely crushing this album cycle so far. This is yet another natural sounding, chilled out track with beautiful vocals and a serene soundscape. Um, but it's the long extended movements and almost five minute runtime that pushes this one into the standout category for me. And I am so excited for this album to come out. Uh, this Glacier stuff is sounding masterful and unlike anything else we really hear in the EDM extended uh, industry right now. And my number one track of the week is Camouflage with People. What a wild tune this one is. Camouflage tackles his kind of signature garage house style, but uh, turns the darkness up to 11. Uh, the vocal chops are fantastic. The crashing synths hit like a truck, and the whole minimalistic nature of the track worked out beautifully. It is a very dark and deep um, tone that we haven't heard a ton of Camouflage do as of late, but he's done a great job of keeping this garage sound very the core of his identity and then kind of bouncing around all the kind of attached subgenres or sounds and soundscapes atmospheres and tones and um this might be one of my favorite camouflage tracks yet but uh yeah this has been this week in edm uh, let me know you guys think of any and all songs in the comment section below other than that i'm dakota from Bowtie media and i'll see you guys in another video